Go ahead, lady. Uh, Phila. Oh, sorry. I you mentioned that you are providing liquidity for MM. Yep. Would you be able to share with us a little bit of how that works? Um, earlier today, I had a live stream, and yeah, we saw one of the comments was that you know we want to be at ten percent or less in terms of liquidity, and that potentially, if we're not managing our liquidity properly, it can be having negative or downward pressure on the price. Can you yeah, share with us maybe yeah. a little bit more about what goes on there? Yeah, no, no, not about it. Uh, let me just switch to to liquidity screen. Uh, ah, here we go. Morning, guys. Morning. Good morning. I'm late Good night. night. <laughs> so, Not too bad, no. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> so li liquidity. So you buy your MMs. You buy half MM and half US USDC. And at the price where you buy them, no, at the price when you mint them, when you put them inside the liquidity pool, liquidity range, that's the middle point of your uh, of your range. So half of MM, depending on where you set your uh, range to for them to be sold uh if you put them closer your average will be somewhere here in the middle let's say you put your so you entered with your mms at 40 and you put your mms at let's say 63 so your your average will be around 50 when you sell them when 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 it when the price hits 63 you actually sold all your bag of MMs at 50. The same works with USDC. Uh, when you're you're providing the same amount of USDC at this side, so you're catching the MMs that are being sold uh, on this side. So if you put your uh, range of liquidity at 30, and now it's 40, your uh, average is 30, 35. When the price hits 30. I hope that makes sense. So the thing is this, if you're, uh, you're providing liquidity, so your MMs, your, uh, your MMs on this side and your USD on this side, and you're putting your range of uh, MMs uh, tight, close. You're yep. making a bigger wall closer to the current price. If you put your range all the way up to like 100, <laughs> your uh, MMs will be spread out uh, along this liquidity. So let's yep. say you have 100 coins. Uh, you will sell two coins by each each uh, unit of price movement to the upside. It'll and be this, average. Yeah, and your average would be then uh, from forty to uh, one hundred. Uh, so it would be seven. Yeah, yeah, you would. See your average would be seventy. Okay, for me not because I know that I'm getting out at seventy immediately and making another <laughs> liquidity pool. But that, that's that's another. <laughs> Don't do that, guys. Don't do that, guys. Don't do that at home. Uh, so do you see a way in which if we're not managing our liquidity pools properly or if we're not getting out in time, that that could be creating a downward pressure on the million token price? So as you can see that on this side where we're missing a lot of USD, uh, C. If somebody sold uh, 5k coins, we would be back here. And then 5k more, we would be at 30, somewhere around 30. So if you're, if we don't even have USDC to be supplied at this side, yes, that's bad. But uh, yeah, if we don't manage the liquidity and we set uh, ranges that are close to us, they are making the world for us. Uh, but 
I don't see a big problem with with this uh, liquidity. The bigger problems are the people who are going to sell huge amounts. Because you eat through these liquidity walls, you know, this this guy that bought 10k coins, you see this uh, big stack, how high that that is. This was all the way up like that until here. All the way up. And this guy bought 10k coins and look how he softened up this part. Area. Yeah. He softened up all of that. So the next 10, let's say price comes here and there's a wall here. Uh, somebody will buy 10k and this will be gone. So it's it's not a big issue, the liquidity uh, walls. I, I wouldn't say that, that that's the biggest issue. The, bi the biggest issue is the people who sell 10k co coins. Because <clears throat> uh, the, the thing is, when, once the price comes to this point, these people that have that that have this liquidity pools set here, they're going to move them uh, forward. You know, because this yeah. way, because this way they uh, they're making a high range for their MMs to be sold, because they know if the price is moving, if to the upside, they're not going to. Let let their MMs to be sold here when the price is so close. They're going to move all of that a bit. Uh, they're going to move that in front here, maybe. You will see walls walls here like this. Basically, there will always be um, as the price moves up that that yeah. wall will continue yeah. to ride with us. Yeah, as long as that wall is not in front of us, like we're here and this is here. That's fine. That I don't see any any problem. Like like this 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 is nothing. This uh, we had a bigger walls in front of us and we 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 broke through them. <clears throat> so uh, I, I I don't know if that answers your question. If you if you want to ask, <laughs> it helps a little bit. Yeah, I'm just starting to put all of the pieces together to, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully one day be able to explain it myself to someone else um yeah. it was just yeah it was just curious when someone had mentioned that there's the potential that if we aren't managing our liquidity or we're not paying attention to it that it could have downward pressure on the price yeah for sure that's true yeah uh, it's just something hard uh, no to no no it, it it can't have a downward pressure because Liquidity pools don't sell. They they don't provide pressure. They provide resistance, but they don't provide pressure. Uh, the the people who sell and buy they they move the price. Liquidity pools don't move the price. They uh, they are just how to explain. They you just have to go through them. The the okay. liquidity pool doesn't doesn't sell the price. They're just providing. The MMs. So if you want to buy the MM, you have to buy them from liquidity pool. Right. Okay. So I think what the comment more was was that if MM starts trading outside of the range of the liquidity pool that a provider has set, then automatically their position is converted into either million token or USDC. And that if we're not picking that up or being careful that that then can have a you know reflection on the price yeah but that that's yeah. exactly what you see here these all of these people are stuck in in mms yeah all of that here they, they are those are people who set their uh, uh range, range from here to here and they got liquidated into this range into mm and they're just holding now yeah, like I set a range. I I set it when it was at ninety four. I set the range to like one thirteen to, I think like seventy seven, and for yeah. a couple of days I was doing great, and then the price started going down, and so I got converted directly into MM, and so I just took out my fees, and the coin. So it, it's not really like creating. If that gets spot up, then the price will go up. If but it doesn't have like a negative, um, reflection on the on the token. If that answers your question, 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like, I guess I was imagining kind of like an auto sell almost. Like, oh, if it tra- trades outside of the range, then you're flooding the market with million token or something like that. But I see what you mean now. So those people, they it's as if they bought in when million token was 80 90 dollars is that what you're saying like when uh, they got their million token cash no no for uh, if, if you're stuck in mm you're forced to hold which is good so if it goes you, you, uh-huh. you put your, so so if you're stuck let's say me i'm going to get stuck into mm if it goes to 20 my range is to 23 now so i'm going to get stuck in mm if we get to 23 of course i'm going to do the move in between range go out and make another range step. but that that's another subject that that's oh not for, so don't, don't those stop. people stock they actually can't change yes. their position no yeah they, have they to can't they, no they, they can can't. take it out but they, they, would they be, can um, now the, this guy that that is stuck here at at this price he can sell half of his MMs for yeah. USD and make a range here and earn, earn the, the, the fees. But the thing is, he lost, he's, he's in a loss. Yeah, it's he has, to set, he has to set the range again uh, to be hit exactly where he left to average that uh, to to the place where he he was stuck now he has to calculate the range to put the range from here to here so the middle part is where he was stuck so that's the only thing you can do that everybody who provided liquidity here yeah guys sell it mm-hmm. and don't don't sell it don't sell it uh, <laughs> but 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 <laughs> you can provide yeah. liquidity again here and then just average your way you have to calculate these things you have to I- not- I see what you're saying is like change your range so that you are now within the limits. Yeah. Is that yeah. what you're suggesting? Yeah. Okay. But you'd have to therefore broaden your range so that the price you're stuck at is now in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then because I look at wallet addresses often, all of these MMs that have been contributed to the liquidity pools, they are they reflected in the Uniswap addresses? Say that again. Okay, so the That's okay. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the million token that say I say I buy a thousand million token and I want to contribute ten percent or one hundred of them to a liquidity pool. Yeah. Um, as I understand it, my wallet address will now only reflect nine hundred dollars or nine hundred million tokens. Yes. And then I would have to take the other hundred million token and what are we trading at right now? Say forty dollars a token. So I would have to take that and four thousand dollars worth of whether that's Ethereum or USDC mm-hmm. put yep. in to match to match and put that yeah, into yeah. the liquidity pool, where would that million token be reflected? Is that reflected then in the Uniswap addresses? I'll answer that question now because I've checked my address and see not where Uniswap, the... Etherscan, Etherscan, no? Yeah. It should be on Etherscan. So I'll check my address now on Etherscan and see if I can see my, am I still sharing the screen? Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Be careful. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going to show my. Uh, that's why. I'm... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't. Don't talk. Okay. I'll mm-hmm. just say. Yeah. It, it does. It. It shows that it, it's been sent to Uniswap. Hi. Um, so you. You. You know the the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it says that it's in the Uniswap pool. So from there, it'll show directly only on the Uniswap Uniswap's liquidity exchange. 